Good morning. I'm Brett with Video Hot Rod, and I have an interesting little tidbit for you today. Okay, Final Cut Pro has a little bit of a problem. That is that if I apply an effect here, and I want to have the same effect on this clip, actually it's this clip and this clip, I'm going to run into a little an issue, a little bit of an issue. The reason is because if you look at this, you can see my scale is only 107, position is normal. But if I go to this one, my scale is 141, and my position is slightly off. So I'm going to apply, this is the filter that I want to use for this particular clip, the vignette filter. Okay. I'm going to make some adjustments to it. And I'm just doing this to show the to show what happens. I'm going to apply the exact same filter with the exact same settings to this clip. It doesn't look right. Something's off. And that's because because this clip is scaled up and moved over a bit, I get two different looks. So I cannot copy and paste that look the way I want to. There's other things that will change with this as well. One of those, for example, Let's go to the lights and take a look at those. All right, let's put Boca Random on both of these. Right at the beginning, you can see that, that dot right there. Let's look at it here. It's in a completely different position, and I don't want it to be in that position. I want to apply this filter to every single clip in this entire sequence. The other problem is, watch, it starts over. Okay, and then it goes here, and the whole sequence starts over. The sequence of, the random sequence of Boca Random. I don't want that. I want it to run through the entire thing without me having to adjust everything, every single time. Let's get it out of here. Gone, I don't want that in there either. So how do I do that? Well, there's two options. Final Cut Pro comes with one option built in called Compound Clip. And it's nice and easy. You just select all the clips you want and you right click and you say new compound clip, boom. And everything is merged down into one clip. So if I throw this Boca Random on there, it just interferes with everything. And it doesn't change or restart at the beginning of every clip like it did before. Now, if I were to throw the vignette in there, make the adjustments, the really crazy adjustments that I made before, we'll just do that. All right. You can see the effect is not changing, staying still, even when the clip is scaled up, stays exactly the same. Now, this is a great way to do this, but I have a couple of hangups on this. And my hangups on it are that if I decide, okay, you know what, I want to swap some things around, I now have to come in, double click this, and swap the things around. But that is going to throw off my audio. The fantastic Miss Rita Lim. Doesn't work. Okay, this is a um, a process that the old Final Cut Pro used to call nesting. Um, 
I was not a fan of nesting. I did do it every now and then, but I didn't like it as much. There we go. And the reason I didn't like it is because when you tried to make adjustments to something that was nested, you had to go into the other thing and you were flying blind. So for example, here, um, let's go back. Okay, I have a spot right here, exactly here, and I wanna make an adjustment here. So I double click here and I'm at that spot, but now I don't know how much I need to adjust. So if I make an adjustment, it's going to throw everything else off in this whole sequence here. Um, and so then I, I end up going back and forth a lot and I don't like that. That's my personal pet peeve about that. And then if I wanted to make it longer, let's say I want to add some space for a transition, minus five. Well, guess what? Now it's thrown the entire thing off by five francs. I remember you. You're the one who so when I add that transition in there and I say, oh, you know what, I need it 15 frames instead of 10. Well, now I got to go back into the nested clip and adjust for that and might throw it off by one frame, so on and so forth. And I don't like that. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this nested clip or this. Um, After Effects calls it pre-compose. And Final Cut Pro used to call it nested clip. Now they call it compound clip. All right. I'm going to show you a new method. So I'm going to go into motion. Actually, before I go into motion, let's look at my titles here. Let's do up here. I have this logo open in motion. Now, if you notice in this title, all I have is the logo. Now, this is the title here, right? And all I have is the logo here, and I have this title background. That's it. There's nothing else there. Now, because I have that title background in there, if I were to take this, the title, the logo, and scale it up, and move it, everything goes with it. Everything behind it goes with it. That's the background. What this does is it passes everything below through into the title and allows you to modify it. If I were to throw the vignette on this, it would affect the title, but it would affect every single clip in the exact same way. So here's this one. That's a funny face. And then it goes into the scaled up clip. So this clip here is 141. This clip here is 107. And there's no difference in the vignette. Not only that. If I were to throw in the bokeh. Might help if I spelled it right. It's not going to repeat at the beginning of every clip, and it's not going to change adjustments or sizes or anything like that. All right, so now let's go back and use this knowledge to our advantage. We're going to go into motion. I'm going to close this and not save it and create a new one. And we are going to create a title. You can make it whatever size, whatever duration you want. And all we are going to do is remove, let's fit this in here so that we can see it. We're just going to remove the text and keep the background and save it as effect overlay. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Might help if I made it look a little better than that. Let's throw it into VHR and publish that bad boy. And now we've got the theme for Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. It shouldn't take this long, but I guess because it's 10 seconds, it's got to create a 10 second movie of nothing. Interesting. And once it's done, we'll see it pop up up here. Effect overlay. And we can take this effect overlay, drop it in here, 
and apply the book of random. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Lycoma. See how it doesn't change on the change of the clips? Let's get rid of Boca Random and go with Vignette. Again, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. And the other thing is, because it's applied to a separate layer from this, it doesn't affect that. So I can apply this entire thing, or this effect, to the entire sequence without worrying about it. Now there is a problem to this one too. There's a major caveat on this one that I cannot stand. So you have to be very careful on where to use each one of these. And that is that I can no longer use transitions. Okay. Let's say I were to put a transition here. Let's throw in lights, bloom. Okay. See the bloom taking place? As soon as we get to the effect, it becomes an effect. No matter where we are, it automatically becomes an effect. If I were to apply the same transition to this, the original transition takes place, and as soon as the transition is over, Boom, there's the effect. And the problem with that is it looks sloppy. It just doesn't look right to me. So that is really frustrating to me. So I can't apply the effect in the way that I want. Now, if I were to try to make it blend like this, It makes tonight. it go from boom dark. And it just doesn't settle with me. I don't like that. Let's try one more method. Let's take this effect overlay, throw it here without a transition. I mean, without any effect, actually. Now let's try throwing a, fill, or a transition on it. And you get the exact same problem. Even with the standard dissolve, it still does it. So that's my issue with that, is that there's really no way to come in with a transition. At least with the compound clip, you do have a way to create a transition, albeit a not very fun way, but you have a way to create the transition. The last option available is to sit there and adjust the filter to follow exactly what you want for every single clip, and that is a pain in the rear. So these are the quicker, easier solutions. Um, the other method is sitting there doing it every clip individually, which is the probably the best method, but it's also the most difficult and will take the most time. All right, so those are two ways to apply an effect to an entire project, an entire sequence, uh, without going through too much hassle of sitting there doing it one at a time. Um, that's the compound clip and the, the effect overlay title, if you will. All right, this is Brett from Video Hot Rod. 
I'd like to thank you for watching. Go ahead and click that like and those subscribe buttons, and, and uh, let's keep this going. All right, thank you very much for watching.